Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 116, Jennifer Coolidge edition. I didn't wait, so when I was pulling assets for the last episode, I looked up the Kris Jenner thing, and I have seen that before. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's so and famous. And that didn't happen, so that's good. It did not happen. I'm not allergic to lip filler. If you guys missed it, at the end of last episode, I did mention that I was getting lip filler, and surprise, I have it done right now. I feel like I am still a teensy bit swollen. I feel like if you did not tell anyone, no one, people would have been like, your lips look good today. <laughs> well, I literally told the lady, like, I kind of just want to look like I put on a lip plumper, like a decent lip plumper and I just want that always. Honestly, my review of lip fillers is holy shit, they hurt so much worse than I ever thought they possibly could. I had no idea because I feel like people don't talk about that part that much or I haven't seen so, it. So it's funny because I have zero frame of reference to go off of aside from, I guess, Botox, but I also have a pretty high pain tolerance, I feel like these days. So I'm so like- So do <laughs> I, but does that, no Botox doesn't hurt? Botox, it like stings a little, but it's like, it doesn't hurt afterwards. So it's What about the like, pinch, the initial pinch? It hurts in the moment, but not enough that like you flinch so she can't do it and then it goes away right away but what I was gonna say is that I was on TikTok and I'm scrolling and someone I passed was getting um chin injections like uh filler I guess and she was saying it hurt almost as bad as the lips and the way she said it was like as if lips are really really bad oh my god like I really didn't think anything of it I knew needles were gonna be going in my lips. And it's not just once, like it's at least, I would say eight times per side of the lip on both sides. So it would be like 16 times each side of the lip. Oh Jesus, that's a lot. It was so repeated and it depends on like your lip shape and what you're trying to achieve and stuff, but it was so bad and the upper lip, it felt like, you know when you pop a pimple on your lip? I was just gonna say, I was picking it a spot today and it, it can like, it gives you like a, it's that times a million. Oh, fuck Like no. tears were gushing out of my eyes. She started with the top lip because she was like, this is gonna be very painful. I just had no frame of reference. So what actually hurt me was the poke. It was the initial poke. And that's that they numb me for like, I think 25 minutes. Oh, wow. So with the numbing, it's still that bad. Yes. And I don't think I have like a super high pain tolerance, but my pain tolerance is not low by any means. And I was just in shambles and the bottom lip was fine. Like literally it did hurt on the corner of my bottom lip and it was totally fine. I was able to deal For with it. For some no reason, top lip hurts more. She says there's more nerve endings there. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> so I was just in shock. And then when I first got them done, I was horrified. Like when she showed me the mirror, I literally just bursted out laughing, which I don't think is the reaction she was looking for. <gasps> and I was just like, oh my God, they're swollen. Like I was just cracking up and I just said they're swollen. At no point did I tell her I love them. They're great. Nothing. I just left. I, I think I was horrified. I'm sure she gets that a lot. I doubt she was offended. I felt bad even checking out. Like I went out to check out and there was someone checking in and I didn't want them to see me because I was like, they might not go forth with their service. And you know, it's bad because the lady looked at me and she's like, don't worry, it's gonna go down. I was like, oh, so you see it too, bitch. The night of, super painful and very swollen. Like it got really swollen and painful at night. And then next morning I woke up and I was horrified what I saw. Like it was so swollen. I guess it makes sense that it would be sore and like still hurt. Like, do they bleed? I think I bled. She was wiping my lips a lot during it and I bruised oh. super bad. So I'm pretty sure I bled. Now I have a bunch of bruises on my lips. So if I'm drinking wine throughout this episode and then you see them at the end, mind your business, um, I am healing. So honestly, my review is, wow, that was painful. And I don't know if I ever want to do that again. Do I think in a year and a half, I'll forget about it much like birth? Yeah, probably. I'll just be like, oh, well, you know, I know it hurt, but I could just get through it. The thing is that everything's so temporary. So it's like, if I do like once these completely settle, because full disclosure, I feel the filler in my lips right now. And like, I could go like this and I feel Ooh, it in my lips like and that freaks yeah. me out. But they say that goes away, that that like meshes with your regular tissue and it'll all just feel soft in a couple of weeks, but it yeah. takes some time. So right now it's kind of freaking me out, but I do like the look. But anyway, yeah, do your research if you're gonna get them done. It's expensive. I think injectables are expensive in general and yeah. that was kind of horrifying. They had a Galentine special and I was like, I was gonna say they always have <laughs> deals, but like the deals don't do anything. <laughs> well, I think it's more cheap in Georgia, but it was, I think I paid $5.99. Oh, wow, really? Is that expensive or not i wouldn't know but my botox was 550 and i feel like it does like my whole forehead and mm. eyes but i also got 50 dollars off okay so mine is normally 660 and it was on sale for 590 how long do they 
last. It depends on how your body metabolizes it. This is not Juvederm. I got Restylane, which is like more natural and it doesn't expand as much as Juvederm. I don't know how it's gonna metabolize out, but my friend Alex has had his for like three years and he hasn't gone back. I would like to be one of those people. Like I know a lot of people are saying you're gonna want like in a month or two, you're gonna be like, oh shit, I, I need a little bit more. I don't think I'm that girl because when I was swollen, a lot of people fall in love with the swollen look. I wanted you don't to want die. That. I was almost in tears. Like I was like, this doesn't match my face. I've lost all definition in my lips. Like this is a nightmare. So don't worry about that. I am never going to be, I mean, slay if you have that and you love it. But like, I just don't want really big lips. It does not fit my face. So I wanted a little, a little plumper. And I think they gave it to me and I'm really happy with it so far. Love that if you don't you. like it, keep it to yourself. I will cry. Anyway, guys, we have to get into our topics because today's episode is wow. I don't even know what to say. I've been getting messages about this. Have you been getting messages about the Keith Lee thing? I don't know because I've been too busy on our other topic. I was up all night again, you guys. Shocking. But the reason we are, are kind of rushing through this episode also is because I was up all night doing the most insane deep dive. Like if anyone had seen me, it was maybe a little, too I went a little far. As you do. <laughs> like, you know, I could even remember there was like a time that I looked at the clock and I was like, Oh, I should really finish editing. Mm -hmm. But like, this was going to be in the edit originally, but then it ended up, it was going to take too but long. But then you did so, so like, much research. <laughs> exactly. That's so because, ironic. Well, because I found like one thing and I was like, oh shit. And then it was like, well, I need to keep looking because this is like important. And then, that's how every Lily deep dive starts. And they, they go well. So we're going to do Lily's deep dive and hours spent researching some justice and give you the moment to shine and let us know where your red threads are and how you, you know, Thank you. Thank you. And I can't show you all. I mean, I could show you all of the research, but I don't think it would technically be doxing. But um, <gasps> oh, no. Yeah, I thought about that when you sent me things, honestly. Well, I don't know what might be doxing in the future, technically. And also, I'm just like not trying to expose their locations. But um, you guys, this is, as I said, it was supposed to be in last episode. It's a continuation of the fever dream that is whatever Austin McBroom is doing right now. <laughs> also, the amount of like, even when I was making the thumbnail for this episode, I have so many of his fucking Snapchats downloaded and now they are all just like in my brain. I'm like thinking like, oh, I need a picture of that. And I like remember which, like there's too many videos and I know them way too well. But part of the reason for that is because I had to go through a bunch of them because I was trying to figure out what happened, why he didn't move into this house that he had claimed that he was moving into because I was positive that I had heard him or seen him or like, there was something I saw in his Snapchats that was like, he was like in he was the there already, yeah. Exactly, and I was correct because <laughs> I included them towards the beginning of the last episode, but it's basically him saying multiple times. He starts by saying like, I'm moving in tonight. I'm sleeping there tonight. If you don't know, I was able to get the home that I really, really wanted, which was my biggest stress, and that's out the way. So I'll be moving in later today. I'll be sleeping there tonight. But then it's like the next day and we have another one that's like, I'm moving there today. I'm having an amazing morning. Just dropped my daughters off at school. And today's the day, y'all. Today's the day I move my little nasty ass in to my new house. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> oh, and actually to preface even those two, there was one of him saying, I got off the phone with my agent, meeting his real estate agent, and he said, you got it. Distance, right? So I've been praying for this home for the last week that I move into it and that this process can be so smooth for my kids. They can come back and forth to my house, to Catherine's house every day. And so I just go back to the house and I get a call from my agent. He's like, Austin, guess what? I'm like, what? He's like, you got the house. And I'm like, then what happened? Full disclosure, I've never bought a house, so I'm not really sure how it works, but you have. I have bought a house. Yeah, it's quite the process. Like I said in the last episode, from the moment that you put an offer into a house and it's accepted, let's say you are pre-approved. That's not even necessarily required, but let's say he was pre-approved, he put in an offer, it was accepted. There is a period of time where number one, the owner can back out or anybody can back out, I guess. And then after that, it's usually like, I would say the soonest anybody would be able to close like two to three weeks. Like, and that's like a really Just because of like closing. paperwork and stuff? Paperwork, the bank has to, like they're giving you a loan. So they have to prepare all of that. Like when you sit down and sign for a house, you are signing like 
50 something pages. Like it is a whole fucking stack of pages yeah. that the bank has prepared and people have to do that for you. Like it's not a next well, day thing. We had discussed though, even last episode, whether it was because he was buying it and something fell through or if he was renting it. And we assumed mm-hmm. that he was renting because he doesn't have money. Isn't exactly allegedly like, isn't he broke? <laughs> like I, I don't understand. And the houses he's looking at are so nice. Like they're not cheap. So that is where we will begin because I found all of the houses that he looked at. And none of them are the ones he's moved into, right? So that's where I guess doxing would come in. Like we're just looking at kind of the general area that he's... No. Well, I cross-examined every listing with the places he went through. And then I started to say that he had filmed in his house, quote unquote. He didn't show us like the surroundings of the house, but there are two Snapchats where he's like unpacking shit. It was like a throw and then he was like unpacking a bunch of candles. And he says in both of them that he is in his house. Like it is the new house. He is unpacking in the new house. All right, Snapchat fam, I just made it back to the house. This one like is my favorite because it matches my house. I know you guys can't see it right now, but once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. What do you guys think? I told you guys the vibes in my house are very masculine. I have a little bit of dark colors going on here. That is where I got curious because then I started cross-examining like, well, what house is he in then? He's like standing next to a granite countertop and there are like tile floors, which was what threw me off because I couldn't find those anywhere. It doesn't match any of the ones that were the, I think he toured like three that he showed. That was already weird. Then he had said multiple times that he had picked this one house and like he posted on a Snapchat, like this is the one. And then he proceeded to bring his mom there. Right, so we're on the way to see my new house, I'm taking my mama with me. She's about to see it. I'm excited, y'all. I'm so excited. It's probably happening. We're here. <laughs> how big the property is. It's a lot of land. Uh-huh. Can't wait to show it to you guys. What are those? Are those <laughs> you like horses? that, huh? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> gonna... Catherine went shopping at Sephora saying that she had been at his new place and seen in his bathroom that he didn't have any things. We're at Sephora bright and early because I went to Austin's house to go check it out on the inside today and I noticed that he didn't have anything. So I'm gonna help him out and get him all the things that he uses in our bathroom or has been using in our bathroom that is mine (laughs) he steals my my things so i'm gonna help him out and get him everything he needs so she was gonna buy him a bunch of his essentials and i'm like huh it makes sense that he wouldn't be able to move in right away obviously because like you said buying a house is complicated but it doesn't make sense to me that he had seemingly like unfiltered access to this house and that he was allowed to be in it and that like catherine would say that she didn't see that he had stuff Meaning that, like, he he should have had his shit there. And he also packed a ton of stuff that he showed himself packing. There's boxes everywhere. None of that's in his RV. Right. Where's all that? So could it be in a storage unit? Yes, absolutely. But I don't know. It was a little odd. I feel like him putting his stuff in a storage unit would have been something he would have Snapchatted. Because it seems to fit the rest of everything. Yeah, because, like, where does he even claim that it is? I think my head is at the place where he's lying about everything like every single element of everything he's saying is a fucking lie which surprise there i mean he's always been a liar but like well, so here's the craziest thing though because one of the biggest lies in my opinion that is like crazy and i don't understand the point of it i again found all the listings of the houses he looked at because they're all still on the real estate websites. His whole narrative about this whole thing is this was his dream home because it was five minutes away from Catherine. So it was going to allow him to be close to his kids. You guys haven't seen the house yet, but my first choice, the house that I really, really, really want is like super close to my kids. And it's like golf cart distance, right? So I've been praying for this home for the last week that I move into it and that this process can be so smooth for my kids. They can come back and forth to my house, to Catherine's house every day. So please explain to me why this house that he claims is 
five minutes away golf carting distance because he also has a golf cart randomly. I look up the uh, distance between these two houses because also this is like all in the area that I used to live in. So that also made it easier for me to find stuff. The two cities that are listed for Catherine's house and the one he was looking at are not five minutes apart and are not golf oh, carting distance apart. apart. They are 13 miles apart. 13 miles in LA is a good at least 20 minutes. I mean, even here, yeah, I would say if you're 13 miles away where I'm from, where it's like, you're probably just going to get straight there. That's still 13 minutes away or like 15 minutes exactly. away. So I wouldn't say that's golf carting distance at all. No, and you have to get on the freeway. I mean, maybe you don't have to. Oh, yeah, you usually. could take a side yeah. road, but you you do get on the freeway to go here. So right. that was honestly the most surprising for all of this to me was that's not five minutes away. In fact, none of the places he looked at were five minutes away. So it wasn't even like I had the wrong one. They were all in like a different city. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, were they all in a similar area that is far yes. from them? Okay. It's, I mean, it's not far, but... Well, no, I think it's pretty significant. I mean, obviously he's a liar, so... <gasps> it's not like they're shocked. like an hour away. It's not like, oh, crazy, like five cities away. It's like, it's more neighborhoods than cities, honestly. It's all LA. I mean, it's not necessarily shocking that he would uh, misconstrue the truth because that is his MO, but yeah, that's pretty off. Why I thought it was so crazy is because that's been the basis for his whole like shtick now that he's yeah, like desperate through the looking trees. through the trees. And I'm yeah. like, looking through the trees? But did you have binoculars? Because I don't think so. The motherfucker needs a telescope. Now for some other interesting things that I found. First of all, the house that was his dream home was not for rent. Again, it was for sale. But curiously enough, on all of the real estate websites, it did show that it wasn't like readily available for anyone to make an offer on. It had different words for like each website. Like one said contingent. This one says active under contract. So clearly there's some kind of negotiation going on with this house. House. Obviously, I can't figure out who it's with, so maybe it's not Austin. And you're talking about the original house that he said he got. Yes. So the original house that he said he got is technically under contract, which would make sense if it is Austin, let's say, which we exactly. have theorized that like he is waiting for something and he's playing fucking bullshit in the meantime. Yes. So this does kind of match up with that where it's like, okay, they're waiting for something, but what is that something? Is it to check his bank statements? I don't Look know. Those closely, girl. I'm just saying. This house in particular, it was just built in this past year. So it looked pretty finished, like based on him touring it and stuff. But right. I wonder if there's maybe something preventing him from like, I don't know. If it's, it's the credit check, girly. You could say it. I think so. <laughs> I was just trying to explore other options. It's super expensive, by the way. He's not viewing one, $2 million, $3 million homes. He is viewing $5 million and up. It's almost $6 million. Bryce Hall just like sitting in the sidelines like, when are you going to pay me my $5 million? Right? <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, he's so public about everything too. How can you be like, I have this much money that I'm looking at these houses, but then you owe all of these people money. It makes me want, I mean, I guess like the owner wouldn't care as long as they just logged the into bank. TikTok. They were like, oh. <laughs> well, no, but specifically like if you Google him, Horrifying. it's not good financial stuff that comes up. So I wonder if it was well, like. Well, but at the same time, if he is pre-approved for a loan, it really doesn't matter what his financial exactly. state is. That's what I was going to say. I guess like, as long as the bank check. is paying for it, then who cares? But mm -hmm. And that's how we got into our housing crisis in 2008. Have you watched The Greatest Showman? Maybe not well I'm enough. Pretty to... sure that's the movie I'm thinking of where he gets a loan with like some fake ass fucking document he just like scribbled some shit on back in the day. You know, Austin would have been all up on that whole scheme. He would have been doing that left and right. I mean, I can't imagine how he would get a pr like, unless he just like, has he been making a lot on Snapchat and he just like has a bunch of cash that he could put down or something? It literally either has to be cash or maybe he has paid off people that we don't know about. I really don't think he's paid. Like the last we checked on Bryce Hall, he has not paid him the $5 million that they were contractually obligated to pay him. Well, and that was like even a bigger thing. Like his company owed like a lot of people money. It wasn't just the fighters. Yeah. It was like people who worked the event. So I don't know exactly um, how he's getting away with this, but he is, I guess. And then it's something to keep in mind that, I mean, I don't know if it would be cheaper or more expensive, but the house that Catherine lives in, they lease. And it's a lot of money, but this is almost $6 million. The estimated um, monthly is almost $40,000. Christ, I would have vomited. And it's a six bedroom house. 
And I'm just like, you wouldn't even have the kids there all the time. Oh, come on. But that's literally like, look at when they got that mansion that they had to walk like 45 miles to go take a newborn, like a cold ass bath because they didn't even have hot water. They've always just wanted to display that lifestyle that to me is not even appealing. Like, I don't want to have to not live in the same wing as my child. You know? Well, the thing about this, though, is like most of the houses that because I spent a lot of time looking at all these different listings and they aren't huge houses like six bedrooms is like a lot of bedrooms, but it's also like there's an office. Yeah. There's like other kind of like bonus rooms. But looking at them, they're not on like gigantic properties. Well, that doesn't really matter in L.A. You pay fucking if you have six bedrooms, you're paying well, for that's that. What I was looking at because so I'm looking at these houses being like, oh, my God, this is so-. like they were all really nice and really cool. Very like. Like, they're all kind of the same modern vibe. I cannot even fathom looking at even like a one bedroom that is as nice as these six bedrooms are because they are so nice. Seeing where they've lived before and all the houses they've had and like what they're looking at, I'm like, wow, guys, must be nice. Like, I can't imagine having this be like, yep, yeah, that's like the kind of house we're looking at and it's a realistic option. Well, maybe it's not a realistic option. And they but. both need to have their own house. I mean, and if Catherine's rent is so fucking expensive, how are they? affording any of this shit my question snapchat must be paying because again david dobrik too has just completely switched just to snapchat so it has to be paying a significant amount i don't know how many views he's getting but like whatever he's doing right now it's fucking weird and manipulative and clout gobliny but like he probably is making so much money. And that's why I told Lily before this segment, I was like, I do not want to talk about Austin McBroom anymore. And I hope we don't have to after this because if I had to make a guess, he's going to talk more shit. He's going to lie. He's going to scheme. He's going to do more shit to try to drum up more attention. And he's going viral on TikTok, going viral literally everywhere. Twitter, well, I'm but sure the too, TikTok, I there, So I interesting know. thing there though is the TikTok, it's not his, he's not getting any money for those. It's other people uploading it. Yes, but it's also for sure drawing a ton of attention to Snapchat. I mean, I wouldn't go to Snapchat and follow him, but other people would. I have gone to see some things that are like happening in real time. But like for the most part, I watched everything and downloaded everything just off people's TikToks. Like even the ones we were watching uh, last episode, they were like, 15 million views. No, yeah, they're definitely getting traction. And then also, I mean, when you're watching those TikToks too, it literally stops every five seconds for an ad. So Snapchat is pumping out those ads. Before I realized how they did it, I was like, how are they like making so much money on Snapchat? That is because every few you watch, it plays an ad. And I'm like, oh, wow. And people sit through it because yeah. I guess they're short ads. But the other part that I, it could be completely irrelevant. I didn't notice it at first. And then I was texting Jesse and like talking to her about it. And then I like glanced over at my screen and out of the corner of my eye, I saw the letters RV. Oh, and I was yeah. like, what do you mean? The description for this house. The says, one that he said he got, right? Yeah. Property features a gated circular driveway leading to a 50 foot long RV slash motorhome parking space with sewer hookup. So not even just like, oh, there's space to park your RV, but like specifically it is built to house an RV. So that even had me thinking, what if they had an RV come with the house. That would be ridiculous. I feel like that's a whole separate home. It is. But if you're already paying for a $6 million home, what's another 100,000? Jesus, I don't know. That would be ridiculous. But it does make sense that he would have it parked there the whole time. Yep. I get that that does sound a little like, oh, we'll throw in an RV. But like when you buy a house that like, if you want to buy the furniture, you can. I feel like when there's bigger places like that and they are so much money, throwing in extras is pretty standard. I feel like it's like a toy that they're like, oh, it was probably, they had one to like just spare as like staging basically. Otherwise the whole RV thing just feels so random to me. It had to have been like someone had that idea or like it fell in his lap. I don't think he would have been like, it would be really funny to think that I was living in an RV outside Catherine's house. Yeah, so basically that's where we're at is I'm going to subscribe to the theory that he did get the offer accepted. He does technically still have negotiations going on and I think he's making it sound like it's a disaster, but that's only so he can like then have this like redemption arc and like surprise everyone with this dream home that he has been bragging about. So when we recorded this, I was under the impression that maybe he had put in an offer on the house that he said he did that I had found on all the real estate websites. But when I was editing this, I uh, went to pull any of his Snapchats where he was like saying, this is my house. Are you ready for a tour? And he was like teasing it. That's when I discovered that in this picture, this did not match the house that I had found. And this was yet another home 
that we had not seen. Like, it was not any of the options he showed us. It's not Catherine's. I have zero clue where this house came from. Can't find it anywhere. I spent way longer than I should admit trying to find it, and I came up empty. So, that is how I've arrived at my final theory. Are you ready? <laughs> if you don't care, I'm so sorry. I'm almost done, I swear. Basically, my theory is that this is a rental house and that's why it wasn't coming up when I was looking for houses for sale. You might be like, okay, Lily, then look at the houses for rent. Don't worry, I did for again, way longer than I should admit. But I think it maybe wasn't coming up there because usually when you rent a house, they are pretty quick to take it off the market because you don't have to go through like weeks of paperwork. With a house for sale, obviously like something might fall through. That house that I thought he had maybe put an offer in, which makes a lot more sense that he didn't because I don't think he has any money. If you wanted to make like a backup offer that you're maybe still able to, you had to just like reach out to the agent. With rentals, if you got it, like that's pretty much it. They do usually take them off pretty quickly. And while I hate to give them the benefit the doubt. I think maybe he strategically did not show people the house he was actually moving into. One, maybe because of the whole plan to do the fucking weird RV shit, but also maybe just out of, you know, the privacy for his family, hopefully. I don't know if he really deserves that benefit of the doubt, but you know, I couldn't find it. So at the very least, for the sake of his children, I'm glad that that is the case. I think it is a rental that he does have possession of because that's how he was able to be unpacking his shit in it. That would also explain why it doesn't match any of the other houses that he said he looked at because I don't think he was able to afford to put in offers on any of those because they were all upwards of $6 million. I think he probably has some cash because of his recent Snapchat success. And I think that would make him much more likely to be able to rent a house of this caliber. It all makes more sense. It would explain why Catherine went shopping at Sephora. It would explain why he was able to take people to go see it. It would explain also this clip where his daughter says that they're sleeping there that night. Hi, you guys. So we're at Target right now and we're going to get some stuff for the new house. We don't know what that looks like because we haven't been there yet. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to get. And we're going to sleep at my dad's house tonight. So I think I'm going to get these pajamas. Which, I mean, I know Austin's a lying asshole, but I don't feel like he would have told his children that they were going to be sleeping there if he didn't already have the keys, you know? At least I hope. And that would explain why he didn't have anything in his RV because I don't think he's really staying in the RV. I think that's basically a prop. It's a very expensive prop and I don't understand how we got here, but you know, that is where we are. Speaking of the RV, there's been some other narratives going on. Honestly, we're not gonna dive into that. We don't really care. I was just trying to, you know, nail down the housing situation because it just seems so weird because he literally was in the house unpacking his shit and saying that he was in the house multiple times. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this unhinged deep dive. If you don't care, I'm so sorry. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy the next topic. I'm sorry. Well, we must move on to our next topic because this is going to take up most of the time, I feel. We have a lot to fucking cover because what has unfolded in the last few days has been fucking insane. It always is with Keith Lee. My goodness. I know for sure we've covered the pickle lady with Keith Lee. I'm trying to think of many other times. I think we covered him one other time. It was Atlanta. On the right. Scene. Keith Lee in Atlanta. This is, well, yeah, no, this is worse. Is he in trouble or is it no, other, no, it's other people? When we covered Atlanta, we basically covered that he had really poor service, really poor food experiences, surprise, oh my God, gasp. What we're covering right now is a really interesting, like I'm excited to hear your viewpoint on this because this is a very weird development when it comes to Keith Lee's tactic, which is like he goes to places, he's, you know, authentic, he goes, he gives money, and then he leaves. And he's really hoping that those people that he gives that money to are going to do either the thing that he said to do the money with. Yeah, he's not like micromanaging it. Does he give people money a lot? Yeah. So when he goes to places and he gives a review, and especially if he has a really good experience, obviously, he will give like a thousand dollar tips, three thousand dollar tips. A lot of times he'll say, I'm going to pay for like the rest of the day. What would you normally make in sales? I'll match that that type of thing oh, nice oh. Oh, i appreciate you, you. So happy. thank you <laughs> and again you stay late and you had no idea it was us i, I appreciate you what time y'all close we close at 11 it's 11 52. Mm -hmm. can i ask you a question what sales did y'all make today 2600 can i pay you that huh? can i pay you that they can i pay you that i want to match your sales for the day <laughs> he wants to match us. I want to match us today. So charge my car for twenty six seventy three. Yeah, I'm dead serious too. This is what happened 
with Keith Lee when he went to Dallas, Texas and went to Sweetly Seasons food truck. So this is a food truck started by a mom and her son is the one that posted this when he found out that Keith Lee was in Dallas, Texas, which a lot of people do this. And honestly, props to Keith Lee for keeping it real and like still showing that like he sees all this stuff because he's probably getting tagged in a bunch of messages every day asking people to like save my business please like it must be exhausting literally i get overwhelmed with like us getting tagged in like austin's tiktoks but he keeps up with it and he is staying on top of it and he has changed a lot of people's lives if you guys don't know by the way sorry i'm all over the place Keith Lee is someone who was an MMA fighter. I'm pretty sure. You always bring that up and I'm always like, oh yeah. Well, that was like the majority of his life was being a fighter. And then he started like cooking for his family and just trying to like explore TikTok as a whole. And he ended up being a food reviewer kind of unintentionally because he's not like a professional chef or a professional reviewer. Like he's just a guy eating food and rating it. I had to explain it to um, my mom when we covered the Atlanta thing because she was like, well, who's this guy? Why is everyone listening to him? I'm like, because he's like the everyman reviewer. Yeah, he definitely seems super humble, super non like bribable, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Like he doesn't seem yeah. like someone that could be bought out. He just goes to a place, gives an honest review. He has his family or other people he's with go into those businesses because he doesn't want special treatment. He's just here to tell you what the food's like. And even though like, for instance, he doesn't like sweets. I fucking love sweets. Like the more sugary, the better. And he says like every time he reviews a dessert, like take it with a grain of salt. I don't like sweets. So I'm just telling you what it is to me is overly sweet. So I appreciate the fact that he's very honest with his reviews. That's really what everyone loves him for. His honesty, his humbleness. You know, he has a family. And he does have like, aside from not being like a huge fan of sweets, like it's not like me reviewing things where it's like, I don't like anything. Yeah, I know. I feel like he has a wide appreciation for a lot of different kinds of food. Jumping back to Keithy's sweetly seasoned drama, that doesn't really even include Keithy. Like he wasn't the cause of the drama, but here we go. So the son of the owner of Sweetly Seasons food truck finds out that Keith Lee's in Dallas, Texas, and he posts this. So it's Monday and Keith Lee is officially in Dallas. I saw him upload a video and you know I asked him for help and come to visit my mom's food truck to hopefully turn it around because right now I'm having to help her out financially and I've never had to do that my entire life. She's always been self-sufficient. You know, she is an award-winning pastry chef and she is a culinary chef. She has two degrees. Her food is extremely good. We are just from Milwaukee and here in Dallas, it's kind of hard with the marketing because we don't know our way even around yet. We still use GPS. So he's playing into Keith Lee has this question whenever he's reviewing something where he says, is it the marketing? Is it the food? Is it the customer mm -hmm. service? Like those are the three questions yeah. he asks when a company isn't really thriving. And a lot of the times it does seem to be the marketing for a lot of the places he goes to. Yeah. So he saw this and surprisingly he goes. Well, we here. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one to 10. He spent $80 and 11 cents. We are in North Dallas, Texas. We in a hood. I'm not gonna say it no other way. We in a hood. They outside cutting hair, doing braids, waiting on us. They both on live at the same time, him and his sister. But they outside ready, so we had to be double O this whole time. I'm talking about double O seven agents. It's a party out here. The custom service, my family said was pretty good. And it was alive the whole time, so we can kind of see it. Only thing is the only person cooking is the mama. So if you do come, please be patient. It's only one person there to cooking. So what's interesting is I think that when he was ordering the food, it was undercover, but after he finished eating, he did reveal himself. And we have multiple angles of this because both the son of the owner, whose name is Trey, and someone by the name of Sherelle, who we, this is an important character, so pay attention. Sherelle is the friend of Trey who showed up to help that day. I think that Trey had an inkling that Keith Lee was gonna come. I'm not sure exactly why, but he asked for more help. And so he asked his friend, Sherelle, who apparently they've been longtime friends, he asked her to come and help out. So she was the cashier. So she also posted Keith Lee rolling up. I will point out Trey's because Trey's shows this. Yo, look what the freak happened yesterday! It shows Keith Lee walking in with an entire TV crew so apparently he's filming for some sort of like, I don't know, cross country thing, which makes so much That's sense. That's the least surprising thing ever. Right? It's smart. He should be. I was going to say, I'm surprised it took that long. Right? So he shows up and this is what he tells them. Once he realizes that he likes the food, it's good quality. He knows he's going to recommend it to his audience. He goes up and he does what he usually does, which is tell them that he wants to tip more than he paid. A lot more than he paid. Thank you guys for coming. Absolutely. What can we get for y'all? Thank you. We already ate. Okay. Uh, the fried ribs was absolutely delicious. Oh my. The sandwich, delicious. The tacos, she gave a nine. Okay. 
I will tell you, no promises. Okay. Y'all might need some more people. I know. It might get a little crazy within the next couple hours. Oh my God. No promises. I can't promise that. I appreciate y'all for having this. I see y'all giving out haircuts since you're <laughs> little brother, yeah. yeah. So he wants to leave a thousand dollars to the barber so he can cut he, everybody. Oh, else that's my little brother. He wants to go pick up my baby brother from but school. We want to leave you a thousand dollars to do it. To cut hair. We want to leave you two thousand dollars. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a tip. Yeah, so please charge my car for four thousand dollars and y'all switch it to y'all divvy however y'all feel. Dude, right, I'm like about to cry. Well, girls, suck them back in because this gets crazy. So <laughs> I got my period finally. <laughs> So basically, he sees Sherelle, who is the cashier. He sees her little brother doing a haircut outside. I believe he was giving a haircut to the owner's son, Trey. And he said, listen, this barber that's there, I want to give him a thousand dollar tip. Knows nothing of the barber at all. Then he says, I want to give you, the cashier, a thousand dollar tip. And I'm going to give the owner two thousand dollar tip. Beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? So what happened was all of a sudden I was just hearing all over TikTok the owner kept the money, the owner kept the money. That's all I was hearing is that nobody else got money. It was just the owner of Sweetly Season kept the money. And I was so confused. I'm like, wait, what? So Keith Lee went, tipped individual people $4,000 and only the owner kept it. She didn't want to give to anybody else. That's very, that's wild. I've never seen that one before. So yeah. the first that we hear of this is Sherelle, who was the cashier who just filmed that video that we just watched. And she responded to this Facebook post. But honestly, if I'm trying to guess where this originally came from, from. obviously Sherelle and her brother who were cutting hair were like pissed and like told someone like that had to have been how this got out otherwise how would anybody have known something tells me Trey is not gonna be like my mom didn't pay me no he does not in fact he defends her with his whole chest which honestly it's his mom whatever but yeah it's a lot so this is Sherelle's first TikTok reacting to a Facebook post that is like outing all of this and up until this point nobody really knew what's up y'all I bet you're wondering how we got here. Well, let me tell you. So a lot of y'all know yesterday I got to meet Keith Lee. Great. Congratulations. I'm still humbled by the experience. Like, I am ecstatic. Blessings to your family. I really appreciate you. But now this is where the downfall comes in. A lot of y'all was on my live when he said this. I see y'all giving out haircuts. Since <laughs> little brother, yeah. yeah. So he wants to leave a thousand dollars to the barber so he can cut he, everybody. Oh, that's my little brother. He wants to go pick up my baby brother from school. We want to leave you a thousand dollars to cut hair. You want to leave and granted, everything was cool, right? Me being me and thinking everybody else is going to have the same genuine heart as me. I charged him $4,000 on his car, meaning all the money went to the food truck in hopes that she would do what she needed to do, right? Wrong. So after everything had died down, mind you, on top of him tipping $4,000, this man left an extra $886 to feed everybody else that was coming, right? Right. But this is where she went wrong. I'm in the truck. Mind you, I'm a worker. This is your business. So I'm doing what you say. She tell me after this person, which is a third person, that you got to start charging again. Hmm. Now, it's one thing when he say I'm leaving this for free. And so, yes, you heard that right. On top of the four thousand dollar tips that he allocated for the people working that day, he said basically what he's done a million times before, which is like, how much would you sell in a free day food for everyone? Yeah, for here's I'll yeah. give it to you and just feed everyone that comes. And after the third person, apparently, allegedly, the owner looks at her and says, that's it. Start charging them. So she just pocketed all of that money. Expensive three orders. She has zero patience. She said, forget it. Forget it. This is too much. Um, anyway, she goes on. For somebody to come and order like one of everything on the menu and try to get both desserts and drinks and shit. Like, yeah, you can put a limit on that. But if this man left you almost a thousand dollars, why the fuck did you stop handing free food out after the third person? Hmm? Make it make sense. So, all right, everything was cool. It was time to close down. You know, my friend done ran to the store. He helping his mom. He coming out of his pocket with his own money. And I looked at her and I was like, so Keith Lee literally just spent $5,200 with you. She was like, girl, I know I'm so excited. Like before I got on here, I was broke. And before y'all come for me talking about don't be releasing no personal information, it got personal when you play with my baby brother. So everything was cool, calm and collect, right? She told me, she said, look, I just want to let you know it'll be about a day or two before you guys get your money. I work with Square. I've been running my business for the past four years with Square, so I know exactly how it works. But if you've been running this business for years, your money going to clear the next day, correct? So this morning we got up. Mind you, I'm thinking I got to go back to help her because yesterday you ain't have nobody that wanted to work for you. You get what I'm saying? So my friend had me come and help you, and then my brother was really only out there, but you somehow trying to make it seem like 
My brother was giving free haircuts when he was posting flyers with his prices on them. Come on. So then I wake up today. People hit me up talking about, we want to make your menus. We want to make your flyers. Da, 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 da. My main thing was, I'm not the face of this company. You get what I'm saying? I'm not the face of this company, but I can put you in contact. If you go through my comment section, you will definitely see why I'm tagging her business over and over and over because people thought it was my shit. So I hit her this morning was like, Kim, you have workers today? Also, there's a guy who's wanted to do your menu and flyers for you, so I'm sending him your number. Who is this? Sherelle. Yes, I have workers for today, and you can send me his info. Thank you. That was it. So I respond back. I will send you his Instagram, and did you see if your money cleared? You can keep the money that was left for me, but my brother is preparing to leave and go back home, and I'm unsure how he'll get it once he leaves. Granted, all I had to do was send it to her, or she could have sent it to him, whatever. She said, please call me back so an agreement can be made. But I'm confused why it matters even like don't tell people, I guess he's giving free haircuts. But why is that even an issue? Isn't it just that she was supposed to give him a thousand dollars because that's what Keith told her to do? Yes, I think so. So this all starts getting messy because I mean, as if it's not already messy, but she goes on and on and she starts explaining that her little brother showed up to, I guess, like do the owner's son a solid basically and cut his hair. And that happened to be happening when Keith Lee approached and he so then Keith was under the impression that he was giving like a lot of people haircuts i guess so yeah like it doesn't seem like it matters whether people were paying for it or not it was just supposed to go to him regardless exactly and she happened to be getting those thousand dollars because she was helping out and being the cashier Granted, yeah. I don't think from everything I've seen of their messages back and forth, I don't think she had done this before this point. I could be wrong, but it very much seemed like she was just doing a friend a solid, showed up and was like, yeah, yeah I could do it for you. Well, and then it, she even says that like she didn't need her money, right? The right. Thousand, like that she could keep it, which is nice of her. Yeah, I think that that was a little bit after when she realized what's going on. I don't think we're getting our money. This is strange because she says it was after a phone call where she was like, I'll give it to my son. He'll do whatever he wants with it. That's weird. Yeah. But anyway, so fast forward, there have been multiple things that happen, but the owner has posted to the Sweetly Season TikTok account multiple times and deleted it. But one of the main things to know is that when the owner actually stepped forward, because obviously the internet caught wind of this and then everyone was commenting on her stuff and basically saying like, girl, you're blocking your blessing. Like Keith Lee showed up to help your business out. He loved the food. People were going to show up and you just decided to be greedy and kind of keep that money. Now, yeah. here's the thing. I understand when you are in financial hardship and you get $4,000 in your account, is it the easiest thing to be like, okay, well, two of that's got to leave to people that we're going to get into. She says she doesn't know, but it doesn't really matter because ultimately that was her biggest demise. And now you have all this bad press and was it really worth it? Well, because also in like how the son had even prefaced the entire thing is like he was having to help her out financially. So I'm sure it wasn't just like money sitting in her bank account. I'm sure it was like money she needed that was going to retroactively cover things that she wasn't able to afford before. Right. I understand that that's a tough spot to be in. But yeah, Keith Lee going to your place and giving a good review is setting you you up for a like sustainable future of success if you can keep up with the demand. It's kind of insane the pull that he has and it's just it's really a shame that it came to this but essentially what the owner explains because people have re-uploaded her response. It feels like she doesn't really think before she's posting things which is why I think she's deleted so many things but anyway so this is the owner of Sweetly Seasoned and she is telling her side. He wasn't with me. Keep Lee. I heard he thought that they were my kids. They're not my kids. Th those were my son friends. But this ain't even about money, y'all. This is about the principle. What? How dare you come and make it seem like this was something that it wasn't. You were supposed to be out there to support Sweetly Season. <laughs> a struggling business. And then you turn around and make it seem like it was something that it wasn't. I dare you. I dare you. And yeah, for everybody, I'm just, I'm getting emotional because y'all have no idea how much work and effort I put into my business. And I don't know if this is going to make me or break me. I don't know, but I know I got God. And God is the one that told me to go to school and go to school again. I've been flourishing ever since. I have won chef awards. I have done a lot of things and I have a lot of upcoming things that I plan on doing. I don't think I'm wrong. That's clear. I don't think I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I won't keep Lee to tell me 
after him knowing the truth now, if that man tell me to give them the money, I'll give it to him. He, he already <laughs> did, though. Because I've been doing, I'm in for doing the right thing. She goes on at some other TikTok, I guess. I don't know where it is. We'll put it in here if we find it. But it was basically her saying, that girl, Sherelle, is my son's friend. I don't even know her. She just wanted to meet Keith Lee. That's what she said. She just wanted to meet oh, Keith Lee for the clout. Oh, like she wasn't there to help. No, Sweet basically the way she that she pointed it out was like she was begging to meet Keith Lee and she just wanted that opportunity and showed up for that and then brought her little brother along for the ride. That's like how she painted it and then was like, so why the fuck would I give them $2,000 of money that I need when they don't even belong to Sweetly Seasoned? Like they don't deserve any of this money. I think what she's missing is if they were weren't there at all like if those bodies were not present he wouldn't have given four thousand dollars he would have given two thousand dollars a hundred percent and also she's completely neglecting and does not mention at all the point where she stopped giving free food after three customers when he gave her almost a thousand dollars extra whose little friend was that the fault of like that's you're just not wanting to follow what Keith Lee said. Now it's easy to get greedy again when you're going through it but this is not the way to do it. That rhymed. When I tell you the son, we haven't even gotten to his TikToks yet, went off for like 30 minutes. We will not be watching all of those, but he went on for 30 minutes defending his mom. Actually, let's just jump to those because wow. So this is him addressing everything for the first time. Okay, so let me address this situation and let me tell y'all the truth unbiased of what's really- Unbiased, not the music. <laughs> Basically, somebody wants clout and they want their name involved in this situation so bad that they are telling lies in order to gain attention and followers. Notice that all of their videos mentioning Keith Lee, whether positive or negative, are the only ones on their page that are over 100,000 views. That's not their fault. <laughs> I hate when like, just because someone is a smaller creator that is bringing light to something, they're like, ah, you see, that's why you're doing it. It's like, well, if what you did is just objectively wrong, like fuck the followers and the attention, then it's wrong. Like it doesn't matter if the person saying it has less followers than you. Well, I'm like, she went to help you. Literally. Oh, we get into how he tries to repair their friendship. It's a doozy. Check out mine. That's not the case. I do not have to use Keith Lee to exploit for views. I would never do that to him. The fact that somebody I call my friend is Ooh! doing that. You don't have to exploit him for views, but you were literally begging him to come to your restaurant or food truck to Give help attention you. to the what, restaurant, yeah. Like, are you, is that a joke? I mean, I don't feel like Keith Lee sees it as exploitative, but like, how are you going to be like, these people are looking for clout? And I'm like, that's exactly what you were asking him for. Yeah. That is making me sick to my stomach, and that's why I was not trying to make a video to address it. Like I told Sherelle, let's handle it. It privately, however y'all want to do, we can email Keith Lee, we can talk to him, we can figure it out. Keith's probably this like, internet I, stuff I love. Ain't no point for that. <laughs> That's just for views and money and clicks. Like, the issue was, listen to the words that Keith Lee said in this video. I see y'all getting our haircuts and doing brains. So, we want to leave $1,000 to the barber so we can cut everybody here Oh, he did say for free. Fuck, I missed that. So, he did say... I want to give a thousand dollars to the barber so he can cut everyone's hair for free and the braider too. But so then I have the question of, did people want haircuts? I don't know. I have no clue. Cause it's like, if he was just giving it to a couple people that happened to need them, but like, it wasn't a thing that everyone was getting, then like, it's not like you would be like, well, you didn't give enough free haircuts. Give me the money back. Oh know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Everybody speak English, right? Everybody heard him say he wanted to give $1,000 to the barber to cut everybody's hair for free. But when it came time for that to happen, the barber said he could not make it. He cut one head for free that day, and that was before Keith Lee even got there. Everybody else, he got paid for. He pulled up to the event because he knew Keith Lee was going to be there because we got a call the day before saying he was. So oh. in order to help build his brand, we allowed him to use the generator, use everything else, use whatever resources he needed to help him build his business. I made a promotional video to try to get him more clients. I was trying to help the man. So initially through the excitement, we was all just thinking Keith Lee donated the thousand dollars to him just, you know, out of the kindness of his heart. But after the excitement wore down and we watched the videos, it was like, oh, he said to cut hair for free. So that's when I asked Sherelle, could her brother come to the food truck to cut the hair for free? She said, no, he has to leave, but he wants his money before he leaves. 
but you didn't do what Keith Lee asked. Okay, that's kind of out of pocket. If he did ask for the money before he left, like if they did charge it and it hadn't hit the bank account yet, that is kind of interesting because it would be like, well, I, I don't know how to give you that until it hits my account. That I'm like, okay. Well, but then also how long are you cutting people's hair for free until it equals a thousand dollars or was it like for the day? That's a valid point. That's when all of them are like, ask Keith. Keith is probably like, I, what? Here's another thousand, go away. The sad part of this is that it actually probably makes Keith Lee not want to do shit like this again. I don't think it's going to deter him from doing it. I just think that it's like so unnecessary, all of it. My thing yeah. is if maybe he just like rolled up on the situation, misunderstood the dynamics of it and just said, hey, for you're sure. giving haircuts, give haircuts for free. Like you said, how many people even going to Sweetly Season want a haircut? We don't know that. Exactly. It could have been two well, And especially if he just said like that wasn't a normal thing. So right. it's not like people were going there with the intention of getting a haircut. Yeah, it's not like a duo deal where like wherever Sweetly Season is you can get a haircut like that's not how that normally operates and i think that that's definitely probably how keith interpreted it is like oh that's like a fun kind of like community aspect right. of this place that like look at what they have to offer and then didn't realize that that wasn't a normal thing but then it always kind of goes back to what you said where it's like if those people had not been there standing there keith lee would not have given that one thousand dollars extra $2,000 extra to those people. It wasn't like so just honor he it. had 4,000 to give and he was divvying it up between them. It was like, no, he was just being a generous person and wanted to not leave anyone out. Correct, yeah. So they go back and forth, right? Sherelle uploads more TikToks, Trey uploads more TikToks. I will say it feels a little to make it all public. And like, yes, I think that maybe it would have been better for everyone involved actually to handle it privately. Um, well, from what I'm understanding, is that Sherelle did try to go privately to the son of the owner who is her friend who she had that relationship with. And like they mentioned, the brother tried to get the money the same day apparently. And then she, I think, would have followed up with the brother and been like, hey, where's our money? Then she eventually messaged the mom who's the owner and said, hey, don't give me the money, just give my brother the money. So it does seem like there is some evidence that there was repeated effort to try they to do tried. this in private. Yeah. However, this did happen like two days ago. So this all happened really quickly is what I'm saying. It really escalated quickly yeah and i think also like don't involve keith anymore like i i think this isn't really his problem well that's interesting that you say that because cheryl has a whole tiktok being like it's not keith's fault and like it seems like that's the common thread where nobody thinks it's keith's fault they just think it was a misunderstanding when you involve a decent size amount of money you know it's just like for sure it's more i think because the the owner brought up she's like if keith tells me that like no keith doesn't oh yeah that was and he already did when he said a thousand of this person a thousand of this person That's two thousand i was you. like well he already did and you didn't listen ma'am um this is cheryl's response to the son's response I mean, lots I of responses in my bed trying to sleep and i got woke up to a motherfucker line talking talking about he didn't invite me out there saying that I wanted to come out there and I wanted to get clout A, B, C, X, Y, and Z. But let me show y'all the proof. First things first, you found out Keith Lee was coming and you said you wanted to make them this weak ass shirt so that you could give it to him. You don't know how to run a t-shirt business, so you asked me to do it, right? If you realize those pictures I took right there, you took those right here in my hallway where my desk is, where I have all of my information, where I have my t-shirt printing machine, all of that. You must have forgot my brother was here when you pulled up, right? You wanted him to do the haircut, but you was out here stressing over the fact that Keith Lee was on his way out here. You couldn't even think straight. But you didn't want me out here. Why are you sending me your mom's logo to see if I can chop it up on a t-shirt? Hold on real quick. Y'all see this? Do y'all see this right here? So if I was not invited, why am I making t-shirts to come? Listen to me. I've never been the person to try to push myself onto bombs in any, any, my bad. <clears throat> I've never been the type of person to push myself onto bums in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So after I did that, you said thank you for everything. I appreciate it. Then something about $25. I don't know what the fuck that is. Of course, <laughs> I'm going to forever be here. So in the midst of the conversation, I told you that I would come and help you and I would be the cashier. If I was never supposed to be there, if I was never supposed to be in the presence, and I only... Totally not the point, but it is so interesting how all over the place that son is. Look at what he said to her. If you 
you got a basketball, bring it. It's courts right there. We can play on when we need a break. Sir, you have haircuts, braids. I mean, now you want to play basketball on also, the side? Also, maybe basketball's not a priority right well, now. Well, and again, if he's the one that's all over the place suggesting all this crazy shit, hey, come do haircuts. Hey, come do braids. Give these people their money because you're the one that suggested they be there. Well, and also to suggest that they want clout from Keith Lee, can someone please explain to me why it would make sense that anyone except for the food place would get clout from Keith Lee? Well, I mean, this is really popular. We are like, we're talking about this because it did gain a lot. Well, yes, because yeah. it's like an argument situation going on right now. Yeah. But it's like, she just wanted to go for clout for Keith. I feel like it's the sentiment that the son is pushing. You can't get clout for just being there. Like, right, just meeting him. Yeah, I get you. So anyway, she basically goes to say, number one, they were good friends. Number two, she was basically doing him a favor by being there. And it's just shitty that he didn't pay. But again, she wasn't even the one that was like, I want to get paid. She was just wanting her little brother to get paid. And the most recent thing that I saw right before we started filming is that the owner has once again posted to TikTok. This might be gone by the time that we upload this, but I've already downloaded it. But know before you watch this that people have been on Sweet Lee Season's ass. Like people are like, dude, you really fucked up. You had the product and you would have had everybody rooting for you and you just had to be greedy about it. So this is Sweet Lee Season's response right now. Hi everyone. I am reaching out to you guys today because uh, my son, he already called uh, or texted however, he got in touch with Sherelle and asked her if she can come pick up the money. From what I hear, she is refusing to get it. So now I am asking, and uh, I'm asking my followers to please tag her and act, tell her Sweetly Season is asking her to please come pick up their money. Okay? I am here um, for a Lane and Ardelio Road. Please. And also, if you guys want to come out and support, please. I am here. I'm not going anywhere. Well, number one, the comments are off, so I don't know how people Can't are going to tag her. Uh, yeah. Number two, she's obviously pissed. Number three, it is kind of crazy that she's like, come pick up your money. Girl, Venmo it to them or something. It is the year 2024. Yeah. Like, I am sure that Trey knows their Venmo. It's so weird. Now, in the same kind of rant that we initially watched of the owner, which it seems like every time she gets on camera, it's just, it's a little much. She's kind of going off the deep end. She needs to, like, have someone supervise her phone it's use, like, Say I less, think. say yeah, less. Okay. As a, mm -hmm. I'm sure she's an excellent chef. I mean, Keith Lee said she was. I'm sure that she worked fucking hard to get this business. I don't want to take that away from her, genuinely. But some people aren't cut out for she's the not social PR media queen. marketing. Yeah, she's not a PR queen. I will say that. I just don't know why she's like, everyone tag her. And it just like creates this like animosity even more for a situation that people are just like, give them their money. say, now you're going to make her want to come less. And now people are going to be mad because now you made her not want to take something that was supposed to be rightfully there. So, yeah. Honestly, it was just a disaster and it didn't need to be that. Money just makes things so messy. It really does. Dude, I was just talking to my family about that when it comes to like people dying and children like fighting over their parents' shit as if their lives didn't fucking matter. Like, oof, I, I can't. I have so much to say about money and how it makes people sick. I wonder if even Sherelle, how she was like saying like, I don't even need my money. Just like, I just want to get my brothers. If because she was probably getting pressure from her brother who felt entitled to his share because he knew that Maybe. Keith said that in the video. I think that regardless of what you think Keith Lee meant or you're trying to interpret it, if he would have walked around with cash in his hand and handed the barber $1,000, the cashier $1,000, and the owner $2,000, you're gonna tell me that they would have like ripped it out of their hands or something? No, they would have just taken it and gone home. The fact that it entered your account first and you just didn't want to divvy it up <laughs> is wild. Yeah. Like, it's just like, who cares what he thought the situation was? Just do what he said and stop being messy. Like, you need the money? Well, guess what? Other people do too. Like, apparently the little brother needs it too. So it's like, well, and the fact that then she tried to flip it and be like, well, you were supposed to give free haircuts and you didn't. And it's like, well, you didn't give them either. So why are you keeping the money? Yes. And then also you allegedly didn't give the free food either. So which feels just particularly ironic that she would cite that as being the reason he doesn't get the money when you didn't follow through on that either. Okay. So I'm popping in here because at the time of filming, Keith Lee had not responded yet about this whole situation, but 
boy, did he respond. And if you know anything about Keith Lee, he's not problematic. He's not confrontational. He's not going to want to cause drama out of nowhere. Even when he's addressed stuff in the past, he usually has a very level head. And don't get me wrong, he has a level head here, but you could tell he's fucking annoyed. So let's watch this together and finally clear up what actually happened because there's so many different perspectives. To be honest, there's not much to talk about, but there are a few conflated and confused things that's going around about the situation. So let's talk about them. Three days ago, me and my family went to Sweetly Season food truck. Number one, nobody had any idea we was coming. They found out we was in Dallas like everybody else found out we was in Dallas because we was posting videos in Dallas. So in hopes of us coming, they had t-shirts made and they was on live all day. I'm gonna pause right there because I was kind of confused when we were filming of how they knew Keith was coming, but it appears it was literally just like Faith. They were just hoping he was coming and had t-shirts made and had extra help there. That's quite a lot of faith, I have to say. So me and my family wasn't in cahoots with none of this. We was all under the impression that they were a team and this was a normal routine for them. The barber being there, the braider being there, family being there, a lot of people being there. This is our first time here. We are customers. We have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Number two, I was never under the impression that haircuts was free. Again, my family was watching the lives. We knew that he was cutting hair for $40. So when we walked up and I said, I want to get $1,000 to the barber to do free haircuts and $1,000 to the braider to braid hair, it was because in the original video, the son said it was slow due to marketing. That's marketing. God willingly, after we post the video, there will be a line out the door. If there's a line out the door and there's a barber and a braider doing hair while people are waiting, that's marketing. So again, it's in a hood. You play some music, you cutting hair, you braiding hair, you're all sitting out, you're having fun. It's a parking lot barbecue. So again, we don't know the behind the scenes if they knew each other, if they didn't know each other. And the reason why I didn't pay everybody individually, the interaction that you see looked longer than what it was. It was really only like a five minute interaction. Within that five minutes, 30 to 40 people pulled up. They was pulling up in droves. That parking lot was getting deep, fast. And for me and my family's safety in general, I don't never carry cash around. And nine times out of 10, if we tip, we always do it through the POS system. And even if we wanted to do it a different way, Zelle and Apple Pay wasn't an option because it was four or five people at the same time on live. So for safety reasons, they wouldn't be able to say their phone numbers or their personal information out loud. And as far as them taking my phone and putting their number in on Zelle themselves, I wouldn't hand my personal phone to nobody. So the POS system was the option that made the most sense. I've learned through this journey that sometimes it's deeper than the food, it's deeper than the marketing, it's deeper than the customer service. And this is one of those cases in my opinion. Sweetly Season got a lot to figure out and I thank God in advance that they do figure it out. The last thing I'm gonna touch on is the son is misconstruing something that I said and I don't appreciate it. After I said out loud in detail what we deemed the money to be used towards, I also said y'all can divvy it out how y'all feel necessary. Meaning after the money hits because it's a POS system, it don't hit the same day. Y'all can send it out through Apple Pay, through Zelle, through Cash App, through Check, through Cash, however y'all feel necessary to spread it amongst the team. I thought and I still think that that's a very clear statement, but it's being misconstrued, in my opinion, intentionally misconstrued, that I see it and the mom and the son can say who get the money and who don't get the money. <laughs> So Keith Lee did tell her to distribute the money how she felt necessary. I never said that. Regardless of what was going on behind the scenes, I felt on my heart to do what we did. So for the mom to go on the back end and disregard where my heart was at and what I felt like God was telling me to do in that moment and distribute the money how she felt necessary is 100% wrong in my opinion. I see the memes and I see the jokes, but I am not in the business of shutting businesses down. Her actions did not sit right with y'all and her customer base. That resulted in the situation that she in today. Lee just ate the food and left a tip. Pray in advance that everybody in this situation stays safe. That's my biggest concern. Now, since he posted this response, which is quite obviously calling out the son for saying that he said something that he says he didn't say, which honestly I'll add right now, I do think that the statement was a little bit vague. I know that he did assign like a thousand dollars for the braider, a thousand dollars for the haircut, two thousand for the owner. But at the same time, when he said that statement, that was like, I'm just gonna like charge it to my card and you guys divvy it up how you feel necessary. That obviously was misconstrued because that's what happened. And obviously I don't think any of this is his fault. He didn't do anything wrong. But something that could have maybe prevented this, I don't know for sure, would have been if he would have said, just charge me the $4,000 and you guys divide it when the money hits. Like something like that. I feel like the divvy it up how you feel necessary is what was severely misconstrued. All that being said, this might have still happened if he would have said that. They seem to have wanted to keep the money. So it is what it is. But just thought I'd add that. So since posting this, Sherelle has responded. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did a stitch because I do not want to be paid for this. What did I tell you? I interacted with that man. The conversation was longer than what y'all seen, but I know what he said to me. Keith Lee, I want to say thank you. 
I'm officially off this conversation. I'm not deleting any videos. I'm not taking back anything that I said. This friendship is officially over. Sweetly seasoned, I wish you nothing but the best. I hope that your fan base grows, but just at your, at your own pace, off your own back. Appreciate you, Keep Lee. I enjoyed your family. Y'all be safe. I'm out. And the only other time that she's addressed this, because she did say she was going to stop addressing it, is to try to raise some money for a business that was mistaken for Sweetly Seasoned, and their name is Seasoned Street Food. And I guess they're also located in Dallas, so she wanted to correct this. She said that she apologized. I believe she even showed up and helped them out, and they apparently raised a good amount of money on Venmo and in tips that day. So I think that was really sweet. And as far as Trey goes, he did not respond in a TikTok, but he was on live when Keith Lee posted and this is kind of cringy, but he really couldn't believe what people were telling him. Keith Lee said you wrong. Boy, bye. Keith Lee called me a liar. He said I lied. When? You misconstrued something that he said. Let me go walk. And then it just cuts off because he got off. And other than this, there's no trace of this live. So that's interesting. And Sweetly Season has not responded either. All in all, this whole situation is just unfortunate because like I said, this woman has probably worked so hard to build her business. And she finally got her shot at, you know, getting the help financially, the support of just people showing up to her business, knowing about her business. And this is what she did with that opportunity. And it's just, you know, it's sad. I in no way, shape or form hope that her entire business gets canceled over $4,000. Like that is, ridiculous and I don't think she deserves that. I just hope that she learns from this and makes some serious adjustments because it's clear in her videos that she's posted that she's got some work to do, you know? And I think that once she does that, the business will be a lot better off for it. So yeah, we shall see. Anyway, I have to go, but we can do a really quick, we love the internet if you want to end this crazy weird ass fucking video with that. Or episode. Sure. It's not a video, it's an yeah. episode. I do have a thought that is not a we love the internet, but really quick. Oh my God. I just saw that Demi Lovato performed at like this heart association event. I don't know, some charity event. Guess what song she performed? I, yeah. No. She performed Heart Attack. I swear on my life. You have a song that's called Give Your Heart a Break and you performed that. Just sit with that, okay? How did that get through your whole team? So this is my We Love the Internet. I saw it today and it was a work of art. This is actually a We Love the Internet, so no cringing or hating your life involved. Entertain For me. For our listeners, it is a grandmother. It's an account called 10 Seconds with Gma. Yes, and her face is plastered to the iPad, okay? So imagine an iPad very literally close, pressed right on your face. And this is the TikTok. Also important to note before we watch, she is trying to read the words Miley Cyrus. Mickey, Mikey, Likey, what is it? Am I some kind of chorus? Mm -hmm. Gypsies, gypsies, what is it? <laughs> M-I-L-E-Y, Michael. M I L E Y Michael. That is the, that was beautiful. Christian I don't know if the vision Michael? is the problem. Kirk Kirkus Kirk Kirkus. What the hell is that? Period. Period. Who are you, lady? <laughs> Who are you, lady? M I L. -E -Y. I want to see Miley Cyrus react to this. Miley Circus. C Y R U S crisis. <laughs> almost we're close. We're so we're almost there. We're that? warm. <laughs> crisis, Miley Takes crisis. The stage, performing some of her new. She's so close to the screen. I feel like that can't help. On who she is today. Period. Uh, who are you today? I didn't know who you were yesterday, <laughs> let alone today. <laughs> What is it? Hell. She's so cute. Very was hard to impress. I love that. My mom is already half gone with her vision. She, her vision has gone to shit. She can't see shit without her glasses. So I will be that one day is what I'm trying to say. I do this show without contacts or anything, but my vision is ass. You've met a golden retriever before, yes? Yeah. Have you ever met a mean golden retriever? Because I have not. Mm -mm. No, that's why they call like wholesome yeah, significant people. others yeah. golden retrievers. Yeah. Yes, exactly. This is probably one of the only times I've heard a golden retriever growl. And it does make you wonder, what do they put in hot Cheetos? My dog is eating hot Cheetos out of the bag and he's mad at me. Ben, you cannot eat those. <laughs> ben. <laughs> he's actually so pissed. Give me them. Give me your hot Cheetos. You cannot eat them. You cannot eat them. 
Oh, okay, I'm not getting near him. He's literally so mad. This is what hot cheetos do to people. Ben, you're eating them. Give me your Cheetos. Give me your... <laughs> I'm done. It's. You need to move. Fine, I'll go around. Oh my gosh. You know, I saw people coming for her and being like, girl, this isn't cute. Like if your dog is guarding it, that's a behavior you need to address. She made a follow up TikTok and basically said, he's a fucking senior. He's never done this before in his life. That's why I filmed it. I was just going to say the reason it's so funny is because it's also like an old golden retriever. Like she basically says like he was so territorial for the first time in all his years as a senior with hot Cheetos. And it was just fucking crazy. Like he doesn't do it with anything else and he never has before. So and I and that like, is funny. if we're being serious, I bet you if she had grabbed the Cheetos, he wasn't about to attack her. It's a golden no, retriever. No, no. no, I'm just kidding. He yeah. did seem to really like the hot Cheetos, but no, I think she probably would have been fine. That's funny. He's so cute, though. I had a golden retriever growing up, but oh, did you? I don't remember her. I was too little. Yeah. Oh, she I had one. Away. Her name was Sunny. Goldie. Oh, period. She ran away? Allegedly. We think she was stolen. That makes more sense. I was going to say golden retrievers don't run away. Right? That's what they say. That's why we think she was stolen. Sunny was so... You could walk Sunny off the leash. She was great. Mm -hmm. She was perfect. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much all we have for you today. Sorry if this was a weird episode. We will do something else next time, I think. Hopefully. The second topic was messy. Um, I hadn't slept, so mine was probably messy. And um, also it was yeah. about Austin McBroom. So apologies. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it. Whatever the fuck this was. I hope you had a great weekend and we will see you on Friday as usual. Bye. Bye.